Okay, uh, next question. I have heard that the Catholic Church doesn't truly approve of any economic system currently in use. What are more modern day economic systems approved by the Catholic Church? And does any country or group in history use them? If they have, how has it worked out for them? Well, okay. it's a little bit difficult to say that uh, the Church approves this or that system. She's been able to work more or less closely, better or worse, with all the different sorts of systems there are. I mean, she existed under the Communists, even as she does today in China, as she existed under the pagan Roman emperors as a victim. <laughs> uh, but certainly the Catholic confessional state, with the, with the social teachings of the Church or the animating principles, um, has worked best for them. But there's no country like that around today. I mean, it, it's hard to answer that question because, like, what are you taking into account? Are we taking into account that the historical stance on usury? Yeah. Because there's nothing if, if we're doing a historical stance on usury. You know, that's very true. And, uh, and uh, you know, part of, the, part of the dynamic that led up to Vatican II was the fact that everything that the Church had tried to get the nations of Europe and the rest of the world to go along with, she failed in doing. And what was presented to her at Vatican II, and what a lot of the a lot of the churchmen who include several popes, what they accepted as a sort of substitute for the ideal was, uh, as far as countries went, individual countries, a um, a confessionally neutral state, nevertheless illumined by gospel values, i.e. Eisenhower's America. And then, in place of the uh, notion of Christendom, or the Holy Empire, as a, uh, a higher Christian fraternity above the national level, in place of that, the United Nations. Um, but in the years since Vatican II, neither of these have shown themselves, have shown the uh, uh, promise that the clerics of that time are hoping for for them. Uh, most liberal countries, including our own, are anti-Catholic in terms of their manner of life, and the UN very much so in a lot of ways. Uh, I say a lot of ways because these aren't complete. There are areas where the church, uh, varying from country to country, is still able to collaborate with what is basically an anti-Catholic state. Are there still areas in which the church is able to collaborate with the United Nations? But those areas tend to get ever more restricted. And um, what the outcome of it is, who knows? Yeah. Maybe there'll be a nuclear war by midnight tonight. Hope not. Okay, next question. Charles, this is your old friend John Ryan from Putnam, Connecticut. Howdy, John. Charles and I are both Eagle Scouts. Yes. Charles, what is your opinion on the, of the signs of the times, considering all the scriptures say, not to mention warnings from Our Lady and various apparitions, as well as the testimony of many saints and doctors of the church? It seems inescapable that the end, or at least the beginning of the end, is very near. If you agree with this, don't you think it is our duty to redouble our efforts to preach conversion, prayer, and penance before it's too late? Is my opinion that many souls could be saved if the mes messages of Fatima and Akita were more widely known. So, is the well, end near? Let's start with that. Well, I don't know. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, I have no idea whether the end is near. Uh, but I'll tell you what Cardinal McIntyre told me. He said, the world will end at some point. Whether or not it ends in your time, your world is definitely going to end. That is to say, you're going to die. So am I. If you are ready, said he, for the end of your world, you'll be ready for the end of the world if it happens in your time. It feels horrible today. It feels apocalyptic. Everything I've been working myself up into a rant over the course of this uh, this uh, podcast gets me 
in an apocalyptic mood. No doubt about it. But terrible things have happened to societies before. And it has not been the end because we're here. You know, when two-thirds of the population of Europe died in the Black Plague, something that almost all of the ancestors of you, who I'm addressing today, it felt like the end. They still kept on having kids and trying to live lives, but it sure felt like the end was there. Uh, St. Vincent Ferrer, living at that time and with the church broken into three fragments, three popes, he believed it was the end. St. Pius X believed that the Antichrist had even then been born. Uh, if he has, um, he's over a hundred now. You know, he better, he better get on the stick. <laughs> um, it is going to happen sooner or later, someday, and believe me, I would not be surprised in the slightest to see, to have that happen now. But I also remember the messages of Fatima do not talk about the end of the world. They talk about all kinds of unpleasantries. They talk about Russia being converted, uh, her Immaculate Heart triumphing, and then a period of peace. We know how long that period is. Um, but nevertheless, everything my question describes is something we should redouble our efforts to do. Yes, 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 yes. Because we don't know. And we are so complacent. So complacent, ladies and gentlemen. Especially when it's autumn and you just feel like kicking back. Don't want to do anything. But I would definitely, ladies and gentlemen, I would definitely live each day of your life as though it were the last. One of the um, elements of the message of Fatima that gets short shrift is the necessity of doing the duties of our state in life. Okay. What does that mean? Well, amongst many other things, it means what you do as a father, as a mother, as a spouse, as a, as a son, as a daughter, as an employee, as an employer. Uh, the duties of your state in life. And that is precisely what we have not done these past hundred years. We have progressively gotten away from the duties of our state in life which are not mere gender roles. They are, and not, not uh, Parker roles either. Parker roles? Parker House roles, yeah. That's it. I'm not no, familiar. It's, a, it's another kind of role from Boston. You wouldn't have had it. <laughs> okay. uh, gen new gender roles, now with raisins. Oh, okay. Got that now? Got it now. Okay. It. So, <laughs> and with sugar topping. Anyway, uh, we have been in a flight from the duties of our state in life. Clergy and laymen, uh, military officer and enlisted men, police and public, everybody is in headlong flight away from the duties of their state in life for the pursuit of self-satisfaction. Now, I don't know if this is the end of the world. I do know that Our Lady, both at Akita and at Fatima, predicted chastisement. And that chastisement could be extremely um, dramatic. Nuclear wars and such. You know, the little fat guy in North Korea uh, destroying our electrical grid and all that, that I heard George Norrie talking about yesterday. Hmm. But the problem is that the flight from the duties of our state in life is in itself destructive. And notice something about life. Most of your sins and mine, we actually escape the earthly consequences of. Mm -hmm. Most of our sins, we never pay for them. We, we get by, we, this side of the grave, smooth sailing. But every now and then, God lets our sins catch up with us. And when he does, and when he does, we start whining. Oh God, why did you let this happen to me? Well, 
don't think of that. Think of all the things he didn't let happen to him. So, where are we going with all this? The Rosary, the First Saturday Devotions, all this is very, very important. We all should do it. But we have to get back to doing the duties of our state in life. And that's true of students and professors. It's true of everyone. We All of us have several different interlocking duties that are part of the, part of the expression matrix of relationships that are all that, that are connected. We need to do those. Fathers need to be fathers. Daughters need to be daughters. Mothers need to be mothers. Sons need to be sons. Uncles need to be uncles. And, everything. and in, in every other relationship imaginable. Let's do that, ladies and gentlemen. Let's do that. And perhaps the day of judgment will be put off. Perhaps the, the horrors that we have yet to pass through will be less. But even if they aren't, our duty to God, oh wow, that sounds like something out of the scout of, sorry, is worth fulfilling just in itself. So is our duty to our neighbor. Even if we get no reward for it, even if, like the unknown scout, we don't get paid anything. Like that Mother Teresa quote, one of the best, you know, uh, you know, people are always nasty, but be kind to them anyway. Yep. You know, all that, it's a very great quote. I'm sure everybody knows what I'm talking about. It is, and you see all these things go down to the same area. Uh, and you younger people out there, if you look at the difficulties and unpleasantries that you grew up in, okay, sorry about that. Try not to do it yourself. To those who follow you. And I guarantee you, the harder you try, the greater the reward. In this world, yes, and certainly in heaven.